It's nice when a great band has a stand-up person in front who is not only a talented singer, but also represents the group well. What about the other bands who aren't so lucky? The band names who have been controversial because of their vocalist actions. Well, this video is going to look at 10 bands tarnished by their singer. The reasons range from infighting with band members to terrible behavior to prison-worthy actions. Fair warning, this video deals with some pretty touchy topics, but I will be keeping it YouTube-friendly as possible so the video can stay up. Keep in mind, this video is not questioning the talents of every band and artist listed. That's not what this video is about. I asked the YouTube community for bands that were tarnished by their singers, and here's a list of the most popular 10. Side note, I am more than aware of a certain Welsh band that would fit this category, but I refuse to talk about them or their singer in detail. Don't bother putting it in the comments because all the names associated are flagged and you're wasting your time. You know how these videos work? Here's a look at some singers who are questionable people. Starting off with a group that was able to rebound well, though it was uncertain for a while. Bad Wolves had a platinum selling single, tons of praise for live performances, and a bright future ahead. Then singer Tommy Vex showed his extreme views, and then he retracted statements when being called out for them. It was a wild ride, and Bad Wolves had to distance themselves from Vexed ASAP. Almost all through 2020, Tommy Vex would call out how the global health situation was blown out of proportion, and the US needed to open up with no restrictions, though millions were passing away. Then during the Black Lives Matter movement, he said that systemic racism does not exist because he never experienced it. He tried proving that with markers. It was awkward and he took it down eventually. Vex then insulted the Black Lives Matter movement with hypocrisies, posted and removed many statements that he clearly did not research. Following his removal from the group, he admitted to slapping former band members, tried to sue the band and label and lost. He had a GoFundMe for solo music that was never fulfilled. He has been kicked from social media platforms and has resorted to newsletters to get the word out. Newsletters in 2022. Ouch. Bad Wolves found a great new singer in DL and are doing just fine. Tommy Vexed? I'm sure in his own mind is doing just fine as well and is always right. Let's get the trash out of the way. Traps made it big with their album in 2002 with a major song and then a follow-up track that also did decent. Chris Trashbag Brown wrote on that for years until he decided to show his true color. One color. He only likes one color. Not a fan of other colors. I hope I'm making it clear as how the singer of Trapped only supports one color and that Trapped has had nothing big since 2002. Another thing 2020 proved is that there was more than one person named Chris Brown who did terrible things. It was Twitter, though. That was Trashbag's undoing, and he was posting wildly racist messages and threatening to sue anyone that argued him, flat out lied to people, and then was exposed for promoting white nationalism. Was that the end of it? Nope. Trapped's 2020 album Shadow Wank sold terribly, and then Trashbag started talking about underage situations, and wow, he got specific and creepy, and I don't even want to verbalize everything he said. To sum up, he got so awful he was banned from Twitter. Twitter. As of now, Trashbag is trying to promote his conspiracies on TikTok while being banned from most other social media platforms, as well as being banned from clubs and venues. Trapped are having trouble finding local barn grills to play, and you can no longer think of Trapped without the meltdown of Trashbag Brown. Going down the post-grunge path, you can't think of Puddle of Mud without the key voice and member, Wes Scantlin. Whether you resonate with the music, cringe at the writing, or laugh hysterically at the worst cover song of all time and about a girl, Puddle of Mud cannot be remembered without the bumbling behavior of Mr. Scantlin. It's not the other 14 other current or previous band members you remember. There have been 14 other musicians go through Puddle of Mud, some of which who have walked out on Wes mid-set because Wes was so inebriated he couldn't perform. The onstage meltdowns are all over YouTube, and Wes's mugshots are all over the internet. When you type in Wes Scantlin into Google, his mugshots come up fast. At one point, he had three DUIs in three different states in less than two months, followed by him drunkenly riding on airport luggage carousels. I still still feel like I'm only scratching the surface of all his terrible and influenced choices. Wes claims he's been sober for a few years now, thankfully, but the 2019 comeback Welcome to Galvania bombed. And then in 2020, Wes and his current lineup were invited to do an unplugged session with SiriusXM, and Pandora's box broke open, and Wes sounding like he pulled a hernia to the tune of Nirvana. Puddle of Mud, Wes Scantlin being embarrassing, they just go hand in hand. Continuing post-grunge, this one is truly a sad story, but it's absolutely due to bad decisions for many years and the waste of massive talent. Days of the New broke out huge in 1997 at a very young age, especially for lead singer Travis Meeks, who was 18. The highest ranking Billboard rock single of all time, multi-time certified albums, and flushed down the drain due to heavy, heavy drug use. I have to be careful how I describe all of this on YouTube, but one of the best 
naturally talented voices I've ever heard was so messed up that he fired his own band members, spiraled out with heart addiction, and roughly five years after opening for Metallica, he was featured on an episode of Intervention. The next several years would see Meeks go off and on the wagon, go on tours with success and failure, have a true Days of the New reunion that actually ended early due to another breakup, and run-ins with the law resulting in various stints behind bars. Former bandmates and people around him quoted Meeks as being difficult to communicate with, and for over a decade, Meeks promised a fourth full album that never came to light. As great as that self-titled Yellow album is from 97, it's also difficult to not have it in the back of your mind that burning question of we could have had so much more if Travis Meeks had gotten his head on straight. This one is also a shame because of how successful Creed was in the late 90s and early 2000s and how the other three members of Creed were not a problem. But Scott Stapp dampened a lot of Creed's success with his behavior during the band's main run and for many years to come. Aside from the big hits being memed, Creed has a world of talent, but Scott Stapp was... Scott Stapp. The voice of Creed has had several periods of issues and bad behavior, including leaked tapes, run-ins with the law, but it all came to a head, in my opinion, after Creed had broken up and the man recorded himself on the side of the highway yelling at former President Obama to unfreeze his bank accounts. I promise I made none of that up. Stapp also had periods where he got his act together and he would try to make a better name for himself, but he would keep cycling to bad habits and odd behavior both on the road and his personal life, including with his children. It's some sad stuff. As of this video, Stapp is still trying to collaborate with other artists and return to touring. I'm just hoping he can stay clean, behave, and not give more reasons for people to bag on Creed because let's be honest, everyone and their mother has a Creed impression and pretends to be Scott Stapp Yarling. Now we go to a man representing three bands in terrible ways, but each band has fortunately been able to distance themselves from singer Johnny Craig, but not without being caught in the middle of everything. Craig, who was the vocalist for each of the bands listed, has been exposed for illegal activity in several forms, as well as had many serious accusations over the years. It's a lot. It's a long, ugly list. I can't even begin to break down the timeline of which band Craig was with when each action was brought to light, but let it be known that three different bands had to deal with Johnny Craig and were not better for it. There was the MacBook scandal where he tried to sell a MacBook on Twitter to fans, accept payments, and then never deliver a MacBook. That was the first big sign. Many drug-related arrests follow, along with continued admittance of continued usage over the years through different bands. Along with many, many abuse allegations, he's been kicked out of every group he's been in, banned from Warped Tour, and I'm sure there's a much more of the ugly truth out there surrounding the man's actions over the past 10 plus years. Every band that Craig has been a part of has been able to move on, but... Ugh, not the best resume for the man. Speaking of Warp Tour, brand new! I know a few of you just got uncomfortable after mentioning the name, and for good reason, as Jesse Lacey has sullied the name of brand new for just about every former fan out there. You know how over the past few years, many Warp Tour pop punk bands have had allegations and accusations and Me Too statements towards them? Yep, that's Jesse Lacey in a nutshell. It started in 2017 when two women came forward claiming that Lacey, in his 20s at the time, assaulted them and had serious inappropriate conduct with them at Warp Tour. One one of the girls was under 18. It gets gross, and that's all I'm gonna go into specific details about as to keep this YouTube friendly. Lacey previously admitted to having sought addiction help around the same time frame in the 2000s, but after that, the accusations came forward, and the name Brand New hasn't been heard the same way since. Not much has been heard of from Lacey since, and Brand New is a thing of the past, just like Warp Tour. Seriously, how many Warped Tour bands now have situations like this with a band member being repulsive? Another case of me not trying to rip on the music because As I Lay Dying have great albums in the past and are still trying to push on today, but I do not think it can be argued that most people who know of As I Lay Dying cannot ignore what Tim Lambesis did that landed him in jail for years. Even though things have settled down, apologies have been made, and the band is moving on, it's something you cannot forget. In 2013, Lambesis tried to hire a hitman to unalive his wife. Turned out the hitman was with the FBI and they were in on everything and Lambesis was sentenced to years in prison. It's difficult to make a joke about all this as it's all terrible. Since Lambesis released from prison, he has tried to make amends, return to Christianity, and As I Lay Dying released the comeback album Shaped by Fire in 2019. The band is still active as of 2022, and I have to say I don't know of many metal or metalcore bands that have an active attempted unaliver in their lineup. Lambesis has said he can't go into every gritty detail due to lawyers and court stuff, and he has been open about his substance abuse during that time. But regardless of reasoning or repentance, As I Lay Dying for sure has a history and will always be associated with all of that. 
Fun fact, when I put the question for suggestions on this video topic on YouTube, Guns N' Roses was the most suggested by a landslide. Axl Rose's shenanigans, for better or worse, are a big part of what people remember about Guns N' Roses. His stories are legendary, shocking, brutal, and at no point was anyone expected anything less. It's Axl Rose, of course you cannot think of Guns N' Roses without thinking of this wild man. Some people like me associate Mr. Rose with the infamous venue-clearing riots that he started, ending with him in the back of a cop car. Others associate Guns N' Roses with wild and raunchy language in interviews and songs by Mr. Rose, who was never one to pull punches when speaking for the rock and roll lifestyle. Mugshots, substances, riots taking over a decade to make an album he promised he'd make, cycling through band members that couldn't stand it for too long, all of this is true lore in the book of Guns N' Roses. It's a dirty, filthy book. Guns N' Roses are still performing with three-fifths of the original lineup and have started releasing old B-sides, and Axl Rose has apparently calmed down a little in his old age? I don't know. I somehow doubt that as I say it. Guns N' Roses had one of the most memorable frontmen of all time, for sure. The memories aren't always a highlight reel either. Ugh, I could spend an hour on Guns N' Roses and specifically Axl Rose shenanigans. This one I stand by because in the mid-2000s and early 2010s, 30 Seconds to Mars had a huge following. Everyone swooned over Jared Leto, then Leto started to change. He went from handsome lead singer, to model, to actor, to cult leader, to becoming so intolerable that longtime band members were leaving. You can no longer think of 30 Seconds to Mars without thinking about Jared's changes. Putting aside the extremely questionable America album, which was bad. It was just awful. But look at all of Jared Leto's ventures during that America time frame and after. Movie roles that had him laughed at, guitarist Tomo leaving two months after America came out, and then there's the island. What do I say about this nonsense that can make Jared Leto sound credible in any form? When he's not badly casted in ill-suited roles, not saying he's a bad actor, he's just badly casted, he's running around with his followers on Mars Island. I can't believe they call it that. Add many serious abuse allegations against him, Illuminati signaling, and bizarre interviews, the time of This Is War is a bit tainted now because you can't help but think of this face when talking about 30 Seconds to Mars. And that was a look at 10 bands tarnished by their singer. If you know of another band who was overshadowed by their singer's antics, leave a comment and let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Chris Doman and Dom Noble. You can have a say in upcoming videos, get weekly new music playlists, and see videos early by supporting Rocked On Patreon. Click the Patreon link in the video description to help support the channel. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified on upcoming videos, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm aware that there's gonna be many people upset watching this video wanting to argue you how this band is still good. Okay, that's not the part of this video though. Don't get offended over something on YouTube.